This is the 2023 Cervelo Caledonia 5 with rival ETEP. Let's talk about it. guys welcome back so as usual with all the bikes we check out with this bike we're gonna look at the spec slash features we're gonna find out the weight we're gonna look at the ride quality and lastly we're gonna answer the question should you buy this bike so drop a like hit subscribe and let's hop right into it Alright guys, well first and foremost, what is the Caledonia? Well, the Caledonia is Cervelo's endurance offering in their road bike lineup. So unlike their other bikes, the Caledonia is going to be geared toward comfort just as much as it will be geared toward performance. Essentially, the Caledonia was created with one race in mind, and that was Perry roubaix The Perry roubaix course is filled with tons of rough cobblestone, and Cervelo's other bikes, namely their R-Series and their S-Series, were just going to be too stiff to keep riders comfortable the whole way through. So Cervelo decided to solve the problem by releasing their Caledonia road bike. So what sets the Caledonia apart from Cervelo's other offerings? Well, as I said, it's going to be geared toward comfort just as much as performance. And the way Cervelo is going to achieve that comfort is by a few things. So first of all, the frame is gonna be stiff, but it's not gonna to be too stiff. So there's gonna be a lot more compliance found in this frame over the other frames that Cervelo makes in their R and their S series. So the compliance is really gonna help smooth out the road vibrations and just make it easier to glide over the tarmac imperfections. The other way they're gonna achieve the comfort is by offering tire clearance up to 34 millimeters wide. And so that's gonna help really smooth out the road vibrations. And then also the seat post is gonna be a carbon fiber D shaped seat post. And again, that's also gonna help smooth out some of the road vibrations. Now, even though the Caledonia is gonna be on the comfort side, it doesn't necessarily sacrifice performance. This is definitely gonna be a lighter bike and more performance oriented than other endurance bikes, such as the Trek Nomani or the Specialized Roubaix. This is gonna be a bike that you can still fly up the hills and rip through the corners in a pretty aggressive way because it's just not gonna be as heavy or cumbersome as some of the other sort of endurance road bikes out there. Now in Cervelo's lineup, the geometry is going to be more relaxed than other Cervelo bikes. Although it definitely is still an aggressive position. It's going to be more aggressive than other endurance road bikes out there, such as the Trek Domani or the Specialized Roubaix. In fact, the geometry on this bike is very similar to the old Cervelo S3 which was recently discontinued, but that was still an aero race bike. And so the geometry on this is gonna be very close to the geometry you'd find on one of those bikes. But because you have room for 34 mil tires and a more comfortable, smoother frame, this bike really will give you one thing over the other Cervelo bikes, and that is versatility. This is a bike that can pretty much be used in all road conditions, good weather, bad weather. You don't necessarily have to check the forecast before taking a bike out like this. Whereas with a bike like the R5 or the S5, you'd probably want to make sure you're on more or less smooth tarmac before taking those out on the road. Now this bike isn't just going to be more comfortable than the S series and R series, but it's going to also be more stable. So Cervelo went with creating stability within this bike in three different ways. The first is that the head tube is gonna be a bit more slack than you'd find on the other bikes. Uh, secondly, the bottom bracket is gonna be a little bit lower. And thirdly, the wheelbase is gonna be a little bit longer. So the long wheelbase, the lower bottom bracket, and the slacker head tube is gonna make the bike feel very comfortable, stable, and planted. So if you don't like twitchy race bikes, this is gonna be Cervelo's answer to that. Of course, this is still a Cervelo at the end of the day. So that means Cervelo would of course consider aerodynamics. So the head tube on this bike is gonna be a fairly deep profile, which is gonna make it a bit aerodynamic. And then the down tube also is fairly aero. In fact, the frame design was taken basically kind of with a merging of all of Cervelo's tube shapes kind of in one. So they've taken the aero profiles from the S series and the R series and merged that with the comfort and stability from the Cervelo Aspero and kind of brought all of those features together in one bike with the Caledonia here. So you've really got kind of one package here that's meant to be a versatile kind of do-it-all road bike. 
So I'm sure as you know, there's two different types of Caledonia. There's the regular Caledonia, and then there's the Caledonia 5. So what are the differences? Well, there's a few differences. First of all, the handlebar on the Caledonia 5 is a carbon fiber handlebar, and it's gonna be a aero design. So what that means is you're gonna have kind of a flat platform to place your hands, and the cables are all internally routed, which is really awesome for looks. The frame on the Caledonia 5 is gonna be a bit lighter too. So it's about 100 grams lighter than the regular Caledonia, which isn't a lot, but there is some sliver of improvement there. And then the Caledonia 5 is gonna have a carbon fiber D-shaped seat post, whereas the regular Caledonia is just gonna have a 27.2 millimeter aluminum round seat post. So the D-shaped carbon fiber seat post, like I said, should add some comfort. And then lastly, actually the regular Caledonia has a spot for a bento box mount up at the top of the top tube, whereas the Caledonia 5 actually does not, which is interesting. So those are the main differences. Otherwise, they're pretty much the exact same bike. Okay, so moving into the specs and features now. So let's look specifically at the specs on this bike. So first of all, the frame, as I mentioned, fully carbon fiber and fairly compliant. Now you do get the frame offered in three different paint schemes. So this one is what Cervelo calls their Oasis color. Now, at first I kind of thought this color looked a bit silly, but this color has really, really grown on me and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I love taking this bike around and having people in the elevator or whatever, just kind of look at the bike and be like, wow, it's a really cool bike. Because when you're spending this kind of money on a bike, you, you definitely want it to look pretty sexy. The color sort of changes depending on time of day and the angle that you're looking at it. So sometimes it looks a little more blue, other times it looks more green, but either way, it's kind of got this like sparkly, shiny, a uh, glittery sort of color, which again, I didn't like at first, but I've really come to love it a lot. Okay, so the drivetrain. So the drivetrain is gonna be SRAM Rival ETAP throughout the whole bike. So we have the SRAM Rival crank set, SRAM Rival cassette, SRAM Rival derailers and brake calipers, and then SRAM Rival grifter levers up here at the top as well. Train ring is gonna be a 4835, so it's pretty gosh darn compact. And then the cassette in the back is a whopping 10 to 36 12 speed, which is just huge. Interesting combination. I don't usually see cassettes with that wide of a range. This is gonna be SRAM Rivals XG1250 cassette. The fact that the biggest cog up here is gonna be a 36 in the back and the smallest cog in the front is 35, is gonna make this bike awesome for climbing. Bottom bracket is gonna be SRAM Dubs press fit bottom bracket. It is press fit. A lot of people don't like press fit. Some love it, some hate it. I haven't had any creaking issues with this bike. So either way, I think Cervelo does it pretty well. Okay, so let's look at the top of the bike now. So the handlebar is gonna be the Cervelo HB13 Aero handlebar. Like I said before, it is carbon fiber and all of the cable routing is gone through the handlebar, through the stem and into the top tube and the down tube. Now, I really like the flat handlebars a lot more than round handlebars. One of the reasons is because one of my biggest pet peeves with riding bikes is when you put your hand on the handlebar and you can feel the cables underneath your fingers. I just hate that feeling. It feels cheap and it just kind of bugs me. So when you have internally routed cables like this, I just think it makes the bike feel so much more premium. And it also is a lot more comfortable because there's, there's more surface area for the hand to rest. And of course, it's going to be more aero too. So I really love aero handlebars and I think just every bike company should start making these more standard. The stem is gonna be Cervelo's ST32 aluminum stem. Uh, not much to say about it, it's aluminum. Gets the job done, no complaints there. One thing that's cool with pretty much all of Cervelo's latest bikes, it seems, is that they offer a computer mount on the front of the stem just stock from the factory, which is really, really awesome. This one by default is a Garmin, but they have adapters for other ones too. Okay, so the seat post is gonna be the Cervelo SP24 seat post. Like I mentioned, it is carbon fiber and it is D-shaped. So it's gonna add some extra compliance and comfort. I think it's great, no complaints there. The saddle is going to be a Sella Italia Novus Boost Evo Superflow, or it's gonna be a Prologo Dimension STN Superflow saddle. Where did they come up with these names man this one i'm running here is actually a pro logo m5 and i absolutely hate it this is like the most uncomfortable saddle i have ever ridden on in my entire life i sit three minutes on this thing and i hate it <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because ultimately it's all personal preference and everyone's anatomy is a little bit different but i've never in my life I think ridden a more uncomfortable saddle than this one. But you wouldn't get this, you'd get one of the other two if you were to buy this bike. Okay, so let's talk about the wheels then. So the wheels are either going to be the DT 
T-Swiss E1800 32 spleen, or they're gonna be the Fulcrum Racing 600 XDR wheels. If you have a choice, I would just choose the build configuration with the DT Swiss wheels because they're gonna be 32 mil deep versus the Fulcrums, which are 24 mil deep. And they are both gonna be aluminum and they pretty much weigh exactly the same thing. So you might as well just go with the DT Swiss ones, which have a little bit more of an aero profile, but depends on, I guess, whatever your shop has available. But this bike will ship with either of those two wheel sets. They get the job done. They are gonna be fairly robust and sturdy. So I guess if you are gonna take this bike on a lot of like rough, terrain and whatnot, you won't have to worry about banging them up too much. But I really wish Cervelo would have put their brand new reserve wheels on here. The higher spec version of this bike with Altegro and Force and Dura-Ace and whatnot, they're outfitted with the new Cervelo reserve wheels, which are kind of all the craze nowadays. But on the rival end of the spectrum, Cervelo's putting these aluminum wheels on there. Tires are going to be stock 32 mil Vittoria Rubino Pro. As you can see, lots of tread pattern on here and not going to be the fastest tires by any means, but they are going to be very robust bus very sturdy so if that's your jam these are going to work for you i would probably personally switch these out to conti gp 5000s just because i love those tires so much and i've had so much success with them but these are going to be fine too okay brake rotors are going to be the stram centerline 160 mil brake rotors that combined with the hydraulic brakes is going to give you a tremendous amount of stopping power it's going to be really super modular and responsive no complaints there all right so i think that covers the specs and features so now let's throw the bike on the scale see how much it weighs and we'll come right back all right you guys 2023 cervello caledonia 5 with a rival etap weighing in at 19.11 pounds switch to kilograms 8.67 kilograms <laughs> Right, guys so now let's talk about how does this bike ride well there's a couple things that stand out to me when riding this bike so firstly the geometry as i said is going to be more relaxed than cervello's other offerings but it is still fairly aggressive now i personally like that because i like to feel like i'm in a kind of fast and aggressive position most of the time but the cool thing is that because you have compliance in the frame and the seat post and the wide tires the bike is really going to shelter you from those crazy road imperfections that a lot of us go through. So if you're on bike trails or just really crummy roads, this is going to be a really good option because you're going to still have that aero sort of position to keep you nice and aggressive and aerodynamic, but the frame sort of composure is going to help protect you from this stiff sort of harsh ride that you're going to find on the R series and the S series. I do have a Cervelo S series as well. It's an S3 and I love that bike. It's a super fast bike, but man, that thing is stiff as hell. So when I start taking that bike on even the slightest bit of potholes or road imperfections, it's just not a fun time. I took that bike up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin the other day and did 50 miles up there. And man, that was like the worst 50 miles of my life. Milwaukee, I love you guys, but let's be honest, your roads suck. That was not the bike to bring up there. <laughs> This would have been, I think, a better option for that use case because I would have still had the aero position to help me get the power out and really kind of feel like I'm flying through the air, but the frame would have really helped protect me from what ended up being a just really brutal, harsh ride. So that's kind of the main thing that stood out to me with the Cervelo Caledonia is that even though it is an endurance bike, it's not gonna be that like upright position that you find on the Trek Domani or Specialized Roubaix or Cannondale Synapse. This is just as aggressive as Cervelo's other bikes. Even though it is a few millimeters more relaxed, it's still an aggressive bike. So if you're looking for a bike that is gonna be just super chill, that you can go with the family on some weekend rides and go see the birds and <laughs> that kind of thing, this is not the bike for you. This is still definitely a race performance oriented bike. It just has some added compliance to help get you through rough roads if that's kind of your jam. Okay, so the other thing that stood out to me when riding this bike is the handling is definitely more stable but that also means it's a bit slower too. So with my S3, when I do my sprints on that and go as fast as I can, you really just kind of toss that bike underneath you like it's nothing and it's very, very twitchy. Now, some people don't like that, some do. I tend to like it 
for most cases, but this is definitely a kind of a slower bike to respond, which can also be a good thing in its own right. So again, if you're going over those rough roads, you're not gonna feel like this is gonna buck you off the bike and one wrong move can send you flying into the pavement. <laughs> one wrong move is gonna have you eating pavement. You know, if the Cervelo Aspero is like the full-size SUV of bikes, I would say this is like the mid-size SUV of bikes. <laughs> but anyway, it's gonna be more stable, slower, but more comfortable, although pretty much with the same geometry as the other Cervelo bikes. All right, guys, well, bottom line then, should you buy this bike? Well, you guys, when I review bikes, I can't just do it in a vacuum. I have to take into account the price. Judging this bike on its own merit, I think it's awesome. But when you start to factor in the price, that's where it becomes, for me, a bit harder to recommend. And the reason I say that is because last year, Cervelo just randomly jacked the prices up on this bike for apparently no reason. This used to cost 5,500, now it costs 6,000. And then the Altegra and Force versions of this bike used to cost 7,300, now those cost 8,500. Now, I say they did it for no reason. Obviously, I'm not, I don't work in their business unit. There may have been a reason for that and I, sure they have bright minds working there so i respect whatever financial decisions they have to do to keep their business running but from my point of view as a consumer man i would just really have a hard time paying eighty five hundred dollars for a bike like this when i know if i would have just bought it a little bit earlier i could have got it for seventy three hundred and there's really no reason from the consumer point of view that they would jack the prices up because they didn't give us a new paint job they didn't give us new specs or components or anything they just increased the prices now the rival version True, they only increased it 500 bucks. But the problem with that is I feel like for a rival group set, that's kind of tipping the scale on the expensive side. Because you look at the Cervelo Soloist, for example, you can get a Cervelo Soloist for just 800 more dollars, but you're getting the full carbon fiber reserve wheels, which are the, the newest craze in Cervelo land. And you're also getting SRAM Force ETAP or Altegra DI2. That's pretty much like top level spec for the Soloist. And that's just 800 bucks more. That's pretty much like pre-COVID pricing. This is like post-COVID pricing. And so it becomes really hard for me to recommend this because, you know, look at the other bikes from other companies that ship Rival. Most Rival priced bikes do not cost $6,000. Some do. Some definitely do, but a lot of them don't. And because I think this frame is due for at least a color change pretty soon, they've had this color for a while now, I think it's probably not worth it to pay $6,000 for this. Now, having said that, there's tons of these bikes flooding the used market. I've seen bikes like this on Pro's Closet go for like $4,300. They usually have some frames for pretty cheap on there. And then eBay and Facebook Marketplace too, you can find a lot of these things. So I would have a hard time recommending this bike bike for $6,000, but if you could find it for like at least 5,500 what it used to be, or preferably even below that, then I think it becomes a pretty compelling purchase. So then the question really is, well, sh should you buy it for your use case? And so I think if your use case is that you want to be aero, but you don't want to get beaten up by the stiff sort of composure of other bike frames, and you want to have a little more comfort, and you plan on taking your bike on rough tarmac, and basically you just want to have a versatile bike that you don't want to have to like think about where you're taking it. You just want to be aero, go fast, put out the power, crank out the performance, but still keep your bottom side intact <laughs> and your wrists intact. Basically any part of your body that contacts the bike frame, then I think the smoothing features of this bike are really going to help you. And so I think this is going to be a really good option. If most of your riding is perfectly smooth, then I don't think that this is going to be a good option for you because you're kind of getting something you don't really need. Likewise, if you're gonna do a lot of like crit racing, this also probably wouldn't be the best option for you unless you're gonna race Perry Roubaix. <laughs> which if you are racing that, you're, you're probably not watching my video. But if you want something that's aerodynamic, performance oriented, and you plan on going on rough roads, or at least want to have the ability to go on rough roads, but you still want to have an edge over the competition, that's where I think the Cervelo Caledonia 5 is going to be an excellent, excellent option, if you can get it for the right price. So that's it guys, super short and sweet. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you liked it, please drop a like and hit subscribe. It really does help me in the channel out. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate your support and until next time, I'll see you guys later.